everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every time. It doesn't matter what sport you're betting on, we've got you covered. So before we get into some Major League Baseball action for June 26th, I want to invite you to join so you have access to the VIP Club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So we have a full slate of action here as we're getting closer and closer to the All-Star break, and teams really want to make an impression heading into that break before making the push for the second half of the season. So let's take a look at some of the games here. We will look at six of them for you today. And let's see what's the first one there. The Houston Astros and the New York Yankees. The Astros are leading the AL West, and the Yankees have the best record in baseball. The Astros come in burning hot, and the Yankees are average up. You see, the Astros have won their last three and five out of their last six, while the Yankees are two and two over their last four and four and two over their last six. Jose Arcudi is scheduled to pitch for Houston. You can see he is 6-3 uh, with a 4.68 ERA. And Nestor Cortez is scheduled to pitch for the Yankees. He is 6-3 with a 2.31 ERA. You can notice that they're both uh, good bets at plus 367 and plus 307 on the pitcher profit oscillator. If you look at the over-under, you can see that Houston has been involved in games over the line in each of their last six games, while the Yankees in five out of their last six games. This is a good indication this will probably be a higher scoring game. Uh, the score prediction, though, is showing a little bit different, uh, quite a bit different. 5-2 for Houston with a confidence in prediction of 62%. If that would hold, that would definitely be under the line, even though the line has not yet been set. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that Houston is at plus 22, and the Yankees with their recent uh, little bit of troubles are at plus 8. Um, if we take a look at the volatility oscillator, how stable have the two teams been? Are they performing consistently with regard to their um, favorite underdog stats? You can see that they both have been. Yankees at plus 23, Houston at plus 19. The Yankees are the better team, although Houston's very good. Houston's very good, no doubt about it. Yankees are the top team in the league. I think they'll get back on track, and they're playing at home. I, Yank I like the Yankees to win this game, and I do like the game going over the line. next game we want to look at as we scroll down through the list of games is Colorado and Minnesota. In this NLAL battle, the two teams are both trending downward. You can see that the Rockies are averaged down. They lost their last two after winning their previous three, while the Twins have lost their last three, so something has to give here. Ryan Feltner is scheduled to pitch for Colorado, and he is opposed by, well, the Twins have not yet named their starting pitcher, so we can't mention that, but we can talk about Feltner. Um, he is 1-2 and two with a 5.46 ERA, and his away ERA is 5.03. So his away ERA is actually better than his home ERA, so take that into consideration, although it's not that much better. And if you look at the score predictor, this looks like a blowout in the making if this prediction holds true. 8-7 to seven in favor of Colorado, but it's only 31% level of confidence in the prediction at this point. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see both teams on the downward trend. Colorado is at plus 15, while Minnesota is at plus 9. If you look at the volatility oscillator, you can see that the teams have both been pretty stable, although they have been going down. You can see here that Minnesota was as high as plus 17, so they have been unstable as of late, but they're still overall for the whole season relatively stable at plus 13, while the Rockies are at plus 12. The way I look at this game is I like the Twins at home in a high-scoring game, so go with the Twins and go over. The next game we want to look at is an NL Central battle between the Cubs and the Cardinals. The Cubs enter the play average, having won three out of their last six, but they have lost three out of their last four. The Cardinals are burning hot, winners of their last two, after losing their previous two. Jack Flaherty is scheduled to pitch for the Cardinals versus Matt Swarmer for the Cubs. Swarmer is 1-3 and three with a high ERA of 5.84 and a very, very poor bet at minus $400 on the pitcher profit oscillator. Flaherty has been even worse, but he has not pitched much yet this year. He is 0-0 with a 7.50 ERA and his number on the pitcher profit oscillator is not good either at minus 14. If you look at the over-under, you can see that the Cubs have been involved in games over the line in four out of their last six, while the Cardinals have been over in four out of their last five with one push. On the power ranking indicator, you can see that 
The Cubs are down here at plus two. Cardinals are not much better at plus six. Take a look at the stability factor. I always like to do this. And you see the Cubs are not very stable. Take that in consideration. So they are not very consistent with regard to their favorite underdog stats. While the Cardinals are, they've been on pretty much an upward trend all year with that. And they are at plus 18. The Cardinals are at home. They are the favorites. They're more consistent. They will win the game. And I like it to be a high scoring game going over the line. Cincinnati and San Francisco, the next game we want to look at. Neither team is playing well entering the series. As you can see, the, the Reds have dead stats, losers of their last six, while the Giants are averaged down, and they are, if we can get this to come up properly, there we go. They have lost three out of their last four. The only win was a 12-10 Sogfest against Atlanta on June 21st. If you look at the pitching matchup, Tyler Malley is scheduled to pitch for the Reds, and for the Giants, it's Anthony Descofani. Molly is 2-6 and six with a 4.57 ERA and a poor bet at minus $334, so take that into consideration. Descofani hasn't pitched much yet this year. You can see uh, his ERA is very high at 7.71. Um, his home ERA has been a lot better, though, at 4.91. If you look at the over-under, the Reds have been involved in games over the line in each of their last six, while the Giants have been over in two out of their last six. The score prediction has the Giants in a slugfest 9-7 with a pretty high level of confidence and prediction of 71%. If you look at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, uh, San Francisco very unstable. Earlier in the year, they were at uh, plus nine. They were relatively stable as of May 17th. But over the last month, very inconsistent. They are down to plus four. While the Reds are up and down with that, they were up to plus 13 where they are now. You can see that was back on May the third or May the 10th, excuse me, and they really haven't changed since then. So the way I look at this game here, I really do expect a high-scoring game. I can't see the Reds winning on the road. They're just an awful team right now. I like the Giants to win in a game going over the line. Next game we want to look at is the Philadelphia Phillies and the San Diego Padres. The Phillies head to San Diego facing a Padres team that is burning hot at the moment. You can see the Padres have won their last three, but the Phillies have lost their last three. As far as the favorite underdog status goes, the stability factor, you can see that the Phillies have been very inconsistent at zero, while the Padres are at plus nine. They are more consistent, but still not as consistent as some of the top, uh, some of the better teams in the league. Take that into consideration. Um, as far as the score predictor, San Diego 5, Philadelphia 1, with a confidence and prediction of 45.1%. You notice that neither team has named their starting pitcher as of yet. If you look at the power ranking indicator, you see the Padres are now at plus 25 on their upward trend, while the Phillies with their losing streak have dropped from 28 down to 14. I like the Padres at home. They are the better team at the moment. Uh, the Phillies are inconsistent, so you never know with them. They could get hot at any moment. They have a lot of big bats in their lamp, but for now, I like the Padres to come away with a home win. The Dodgers and the Braves. This could be a great matchup with two of the best teams in the National League. Uh, the Dodgers are burning hot at the moment. They have won their last two, three out of their last four, and four out of their last six. While the Braves are average, they are coming off of a win after losing 12-10 to San Francisco, and they're in three or three over their last six games. If you look at the uh, score prediction, you see the Dodgers 8-4 to four with confidence and prediction of about 62%. So if this holds, this would be a high-scoring game going over the line, most likely. Uh, you look at the last six games, the Dodgers are over the line in four of those last six. While the Braves, though, have been over in only two out of the last six. So it's a little bit of conflicting views there. So this is a game I, where I would probably avoid the over-under bet. If you look at the power rankings indicator, you can see that the Dodgers are at plus 21, while the Braves are on a little bit of an upward trend. They are at plus 9. I like the Braves in this one. I like the Braves at home. I think they're going to get themselves going. I like the Braves to win this one. I would avoid the over-under bet, but I like the Braves by probably two or three runs in this one. So there you have it. Those are all the games that we're going to cover for this week for... June the 26th in Major League Baseball. Happy betting, and we will see you again next time.